tail and might spell a little bit of a tricky matchup for Wolf. Here we go. This is game number one of top eight here in Orlando. We have the Urshifu and the Rillaboom out on the field for Zachary versus the Incineroar and the Tornadus out on the field for Wolf. And immediately the clear amulet on this Rillaboom coming in handy. The Intimidate will not work into that Rillaboom. It will remain at neutral attack. And the fake out on Rillaboom will move quicker than the fake out on the Incineroar on Wolf's side thanks to the naturally faster base speed of that Rillaboom. So a decent start here for both players, I'd imagine. The, the Tornadus on Wolf's end is not a Covert Cloak. It is not Terror Ghost. So if you do opt to fake out the Tornadus this turn, there's no chance it has to attack. Tornadus will switch out this turn, and Amoongus the Radiant taking its spot on the field. It, it, we're also seeing a terrestrialization from Wolf here in turn one of this game. Incineroar immediately locking into that grass typing. Immediately deleting any of the resistance or the weaknesses to the Urshifu on Zachary's side. We'll take resistant damage from surging strikes in neutral from close combat. Fake out into that Incineroar, so a great fake out opt to four with Zachary on this turn, but surging strikes into the Amoongus instead on Wolf's side of the field. That'll do a nice bit of damage to that Amoongus, but there is no Rocky Helmet for Wolf. Instead, Amoongus holding the Citrus Berry. So Urshifu at the end of the turn emerges relatively unharmed. You have to imagine that's a smart swap for Wolf. The Tornadus is holding the Focus Sash, so you really don't want that broken. And even though you could protect against the Fake Out, you of course cannot protect against an Urshifu with Unseen Fist. But the smart Fake Out into the Incineroar means that the Incineroar does not get a chance to attack. There's no Parting Shot, there's no Flare Blitz coming through. And now Zachary's two Pokemon should outspeed both of Wolf's, and he has a little bit more agency on this turn. Yeah, Zachary is in a tough spot here, though. It looks like he's considering all of his options for this turn. Does opt to switch out that Urshifu and replace it with Ogre Pond Hearth Flame Mask. This means that the Amoongus no longer can put any of these two Pokemon to sleep, but Zachary actually makes a double switch here, switching out that Amoongus for Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt comes in here, and it is the Assault Vest set, as we do see, so there's no safety goggles, no Spore immunity anymore, and especially now that this Parting Shot comes through, it will be stuck on the field at minus one special attack. Instant has the chance to pivot out and possibly bring in a stronger matchup for Wolf right here. I kind of doubt we see the Tornadus come in against the Raging Bolt, so we might see Wolf's fourth Pokemon. Yeah, and this is a playstyle that Wolf, I think, is very comfortable with, just knowing what Pokemon to switch in and when. Knowing that he's sending Ooh. a Tornadus here, that does, to me, imply that whatever is that last Pokemon probably does not want to make an appearance here and is most likely Wolf considering I'm going to switch out this Tornadus immediately again to get that Intimidate down onto the field. And, you know, Amoongus looks like it's more than capable of picking up the knockout on Ogre Pond as well, thanks to that huge Sludge Bomb. Really smart Sludge Bomb there. The Urshifu probably not going to stay on the field because you don't want to get spored. You don't want to get, you know, parting shotted by that or by that Incineroar. And you don't want your Focus Sash broken. Knowing that Ogre Pond's a really safe swap there, which could possibly absorb a Spore, Wolf targets it with the Sludge Bomb, gets a huge chunk of damage, and puts it in surely Bleak Wind Storm range, unless Zachary does opt to Terrestrialize. I think Terrestrialization here, not a bad option at all. The Incineroar in the back for Wolf is now a Grass type, so if it wants to try and switch on an Ivy Cudgel, it actually will take a huge chunk of damage, especially if Zachary does opt to Terrestrialize with Ogre Pond for the plus one attack boost from Embody aspect. Yeah, it was definitely a risky terrestrialization from Wolf early on. Not having confirmation whether or not the Hearth Flame Ogre Pond would be making an appearance, but here it is on the field. Embody Aspect will boost its attack up by a single stage, and without an Intimidate from that Incineroar, this Ogre Pond is more than able to take advantage of that. Double Protect from Wolf will stop any damage for this next upcoming turn, but that Ogre Pond still a huge threat moving forwards. Really big threat here, especially now that it will get one more turn of grassy terrain recovery. You have to imagine there's no way this Tornadus can knock it out with a bleak wind storm, but barring something like your critical hit, hopefully you don't didn't just curse Zachary with that one here. But Raging Bolt also will not get any damage done thanks to the double protect. And unless Zachary opted for the, the hugely aggressive sword stance there, that's again a very safe double protect coming out from Wolf, allowing Wolf to scout out the possible terrestrialization, specifically from Ogre Pond. I think now knowing that Ogre Pond has terrestrialized, it's dropped that grass typing, it possibly is vulnerable to something like a score uh, and is no longer going to take super effective damage from Bleak Wind Storm. Uh, now puts Wolf in a position where he knows exactly what tools Zachary is working with.
I do like how Zachary went for the Electro Web as well in that previous turn, possibly hoping to catch a Pokemon like the Incineroar or Wolf's final Pokemon with that speed drop on the Switch. We do see the Switch come through from Wolf this turn, though. It is the Incineroar that will be returning to the field for that Amoongus will have the opportunity to intimidate that Ogre Pond and get rid of that attack drop. Uh-oh. But Blink when Storm oh, okay, misses okay. the Raging Bolt, will connect with the Ogre Pond and does fall short of picking up the knockout. Ivy Cudgel coming through here will target down one of these two Pokemon, going to be that Grass-type Incineroar. Thanks to the Terrestrialization, will be KO'd straight up by the neutral Ivy Cudgel. The Incineroar did mitigate the one boost of attack from the Embody Aspect. Unfortunately, not enough to allow it to survive this Ivy Cudgel. And now Electro Web will go off and is not, oh, oh it misses. That is a big, big break for Wolf there. That would have done a huge amount of damage. Not knocked it out, obviously, because of the Focus Sash, but the single target Electro Web would have done so much damage, broken the Focus Sash, lowered its speed, and that is a really rough break for Zachary. That's a 5% miss chance on Electro Web. Yeah, not only is that true, it also would have ensured that the Ogre Pond could still potentially outspeed the Tornadus, as we did see that Bleak Windstorm speed drop come through in the previous turn. Unfortunately for Zachary, though, this Raging Bolt is really going to struggle to deal damage against the Landorus, which is a ground flying type Pokemon. And I think if this Raging Bolt wants to do anything this turn, it's going to be forced to either go for a Dragon Pulse to do neutral damage, or maybe hope that you can connect a Thunderclap with the Tornadus, which given Wolf's playstyle, I don't think that's something Wolf will, you know, give Zachary the opportunity to do. Especially given that he now has the chance to preserve the Focus Sash. No Thunderclaps coming out because Rain Dance is set up instead. We'll be dropping the power of any fire type moves. But Grassy Glide, actually a very smart choice, ensuring that you get to attack at least once before the Ogre Pond is knocked out. A huge Earth Power into, drag into Raging Bolt. We'll do a lot of damage, but Assault wow. Vest keeps it coming, and the Dragon Pulse does not KO the Landris, thanks to the parting shot from Incineroar early on in this game. While Incineroar did help the Landorus hang on, the one thing you have to keep in mind here is that Ogre Pond does still have access to a priority Grassy Glide this turn, and then there's also the Rillaboom in the back of Zachary's party, which could easily pick up that damage on the Landorus. I think if I were in Zachary's shoes, I'd be trying to figure out how I can get Wolf down to a final two Pokemon, knowing that the Landorus would be the easiest one to KO. Of course, and now especially that this Raging Bolt is not really threatened as much by the Landorus on this turn because of the possibility for that party Grassy Glide, Raging Bolt actually could be a big piece here for Zachary to try and close this game out, specifically into the Tornadus. Tornadus only has Bleak Windstorm as its attacking move, and if you have to knock out a Pokemon with Tornadus, that does mean Thunderclap will be guaranteed to connect. For now, though, we see Spiky Shield from that Ogre Pond as Rillaboom comes in to take an Earth Power from the opposing Landorus. A bit of a missed opportunity for Zachary there to try and claim that KO on Landorus. If you do opt to go for Grassy Glide, again, the priority would allow the Landorus to be knocked out before it could Earth Power. If Landorus opts to protect on this turn, you did bring in the Rillaboom, which cannot be redirected by a Moongus thanks to its grass typing. Now you still do have the option to, of course, pin the Landorus with Grassy Glide this turn, possibly go for a fake out into that Amoongus as well. But uh, Zachary, taking a more defensive approach, doesn't get burned by it too badly because Incineroar, of course, does resist that Earth Power. But now Amoongus is on the field in the rain, which is great for Wolf. The thing that Zachary has to most threaten Amoongus is the fire type Ivy Cudgel from this Ogre Pond, but Rain will be having that damage. It's coming down to the final seconds here as Zachary decides to use Grassy Glide to pick up the KO onto Landorus. It is just the Tornadus and Amoongus remaining for Wolf, and here comes that fire type Ivy Cudgel will be weakened by the rain, oh. which allows Amoongus to hang on and activate that Citrus Berry. Citrus Berry brings Amoongus back up to over half of its remaining HP. We'll have the chance to go for an attack here, and it chooses Spore. The Ogre Pond on Zachary's end will be put to sleep for at least the next turn. And now Wolf has to bring in his final Pokemon, that Tornadus, which again is at full HP. It has that Focus Sash intact, and Zachary's Rillaboom is not holding the Assault Vest. It's that clear amulet item. With the rain up, Tornadus has the option to go for a Bleak Windstorm, guaranteed to connect, and especially because it probably would have trained offensively, thanks to that Focus Sash, might just be able to take two KOs here, which would be huge for Wolf. It's a tough spot for Zachary to be in because even though he has the Pokemon advantage, Amoongus um, has the ability to put anything that's not Rillaboom to sleep. 
and it's really going to come down to how much damage the Bleakwood Storm does. It's able to get a double knockout on both the Ogre Pond and the Rillaboom here this turn. What I'm really curious to see, though, is just what attack that Amoongus went for. Did it go for that Sludge Bomb? Did it try and catch something on a switch? What was Wolf thinking in his approach? Just full on offense. And I gotta say, the Sludge Bomb on Amoongus is such a unique pick for the metagame right now. It is such a great move when you're facing off against Pokemon like Rillaboom that are weak to it, that don't have Assault Vest against Ogre Pond prior to any terrestrializations. Even though these two Pokemon are typically seen as supportive Pokemon in the metagame right now, they're definitely playing an offensive role for Wolf. They are. Sludge Bomb actually a big deal here because it does allow the Amoongus to threaten more damage into Raging Bolt. Also importantly, Amoongus is kind of the last thing that Wolf has to, you know, Bastion this Tornadus against the Raging Bolt. Bleak Wind Storm comes out though. It does do super effective damage into Urshifu, bring it down to its Focus Sash. Does not KO Raging Bolt here, and now they will both have a chance to attack. Zachary unable to go for a thunderclap on the off chance that Amoongus went for a rage powder, but with the offense, able to return a KO onto the Tornadus. Wolf is down to just that Amoongus. Dragon Pulse brings oh. Amoongus down into the yellow. Sludge Bomb, though, will connect oh. with the Raging Bolt, and it no holds poison. on with a single hit. Oh, that is crazy. Zachary has two Pokemon at one HP before the grassy terrain. One with a Focus Sash and one with the invisible Focus Sash. Raging Bolt hangs on to confirm this game is locked up in Zachary's favor. Very well played there. I love that Surging Strike straight into the Tornadus. The only way Wolf has to not let Tornadus get attacked by Raging Bolt is a Protect because of the Electro Web that the Zachary's Raging Bolt does carry, which bypasses redirection. So going straight for Surging Strikes there means that even if the Protect does come through, it does KO the Tornadus through Protect thanks to Unseen Fist, and you get the opportunity to Dragon Pulse that Amoongus, which is the last bit of damage you need there. A very, very clutch survival, even though we did talk about the more offensive potential of Sludge Bomb on Amoongus, Gabby. Barely, barely not enough in this case. Yeah, this Raging Bolt was trained plenty in those key base stats to ensure that its special defenses would help it withstand the storm. Even though Amoongus is able to hold on through three surging strikes, you know the Raging Bolt is going to use Dragon Pulse. We saw how much damage it did last turn, and Zachary oh. Weed takes game number one here in top eight in Orlando. Really well played by Zachary there, especially I think he needs to be commended for not panicking after that Electroweb miss. The game is much, much simpler for him if Electroweb does connect with that Tornadus earlier on in the game because it would have been at very low HP, would have had no Focus Sash left to its name, and it would have been a much simpler end game for Zachary. But knowing exactly when he needed to start attacking, even took good use of Wolf's own Rain Dance thanks to the Surging Strikes from his own Urshifu and keeping his composure. Very impressive for someone in their first year in the Masters Division, especially going up against the Titan that is Wolf Flick. Yeah, and I, I do gotta say here, and this may be me projecting and forecasting a little bit, but <laughs> seeing Zachary play at locals in particular, I mean, the New England region has so many former Worlds qualifiers, so many regional champions, and just players with a lot of that uh, momentum that Wolf has, that gravitas, if you will. So it's no surprise to see me or see him keep his cool to me in this critical <laughs> matchup. But I mean, just look, both these trainers, pure, just focus, you know, accepting, yes, this is the game, this is how I adjust. Worked really well for Zachary in game number one, but I do feel like Wolf is incredibly good at taking information and twisting it around into his advantage. Of course. I think we're going to be looking at a very different board state for game number two. And I think you have to, right, if you're Wolf. Wolf was caught pretty off guard on the leads, forced to immediately terrestrialize that Incineroar, which allowed it to survive the first turn of the match. However, it could not switch back into the Ogre Pond later on in the game, and that essentially, I think, might have been the difference maker. If Wolf had that Incineroar available to him later on to possibly go for some fake outs, get some disruption in, maybe some more parting shots to lower offensive power from Zachary's Pokemon, he might have been in a spot where he could be a little bit more proactive, but instead, the Incineroar led again into the Urshiku and Rillaboom, the same exact leads from game one. So no Pokemon adjustments apparent here in turn number one. However, you have to wonder what the game plan adjustments will be here. 
I believe we saw the tornado switch out previously and the Incineroar Terrastalai is turn number one, but no Terrastalizations this time around. Fake out flinching uh -oh. the opposing Incineroar. Bleak oh. Storm missing the Rillaboom. Will bring that Urshifu down to its focus sash already on turn number one, but that miss is huge. That's a really big miss. This Rillaboom would have taken a good amount of damage because again, it is not holding the Assault Vest. Urshifu will have the option to go for a Surging Strikes here though. Looks like it will be just short of a KO, but could put Tornadus in range for a grassy glide from this clear amulet Rillaboom. Yeah, with a with the ability to dodge Intimidates thanks to that clear amulet, this Rillaboom is in a great position here to try and pick up an early knockout on the Tornadus, but that does make you wonder how the Incineroar will fare this turn. It seems like a very obvious play for Zachary would be to use Surging Strikes on that Incineroar to try and pick up the KO, but will Wolf allow him to do it? No Pokemon switching out this turn. Instead, it's a Tailwind setup on the Tornadus' final turn on the field. Tailwind goes up and Tornadus goes down. Grassic Light is enough to confirm that KO, and we should see Incineroar able to attack first. Knockoff into Urshifu is enough damage. Even though you did have the Grassy Terrain restore a little bit of its HP, uh, and the item being consumed from focus slash lowers the power out that knockoff it is still enough imagine if that didn't ko gabby how bad that would have been that would have been a really interesting board state for yeah. sure but i love how wolf's pokemon are trained here because typically you would expect Incineroar to not outspeed Inner Shifu even after the Tailwind setup. You know, typically you do see Choice Scarf on Urshifu as well, which does make the speed interactions a little different. But just knowing that Incineroar was fast enough to outspeed and do that little bit of extra damage has put Wolf back into the game. Wolf certainly back into this game and Landris in a pretty strong spot here. Again, calling out the lack of Assault Vest on Rillaboom means that a possible Sludge Bomb from this Landris is much bigger of a threat. The Raging Bolt we already have seen able to survive at least one Earth Power, but of course, Terrestrialization is available to it as well if it wants to even further mitigate that damage from that Landorus. But of course, one of the joys of running Sludge Bomb Landorus is that you kind of have a game of cat and mouse with Raging Bolt. Most of them are running the Fairy-type Terrestrialization as Zachary's is, so if you want to possibly catch them trying to go for that Fairy Terra and smack it with a Sludge Bomb instead, you have that option. Well, we get a terrestrialization from Wolf with Steel typing on to the Landorus Incarnate. A interesting choice for sure, but Zachary as well opting to use his terrestrialization this turn. And interestingly enough, Ooh. it's actually the Rillaboom. So the Raging Bolt is still going to be weak to Earth Power, but Rillaboom now with its poison typing will not be as threatened oh! by... What a call! What? <laughs> No way, that is a crazy read. And it makes sense too, because Flare Blitz there probably also targeting the Rillaboom, which would have allowed it to KO afterwards anyway. But that Earth Power is a massive, massive read because now the Dragon Pulse coming into Incineroar, it did it a pretty good chunk of damage, a critical hit there, but Rillaboom did not get the chance to attack, which is so big there. It didn't have the option to go for possibly a high horsepower, which could have done some pretty good damage to that Incineroar. And more importantly, the Landorus remains at full HP in Tailwind and Zachary's terrestrialization entirely put to waste. It was a tough call to make there for Zachary. I think a lot of players would have been tempted to go for the terrestrialization onto the Raging Bolt. Yeah. But just the fact that Wolf committed to that double up with Earth Power and with Flare Blitz into the Rillaboom, a fantastic call showcasing his years of experience in this game. I think even knowing that Logar Pond was probably the most likely candidate to be the fourth Pokemon there for Zachary makes that Earth Power Flare Blitz combo even stronger. I think nothing that Zachary had left could have survived the possibility of those two attacks at the same time. But the way that Wolf chose to go straight for that combination, and even this the one straight up one hit KO with the Life Orb Sludge Bomb from this Landorus, this Landorus is taking names this game. I think Zachary was trying to outpredict Wolf and anticipate that Wolf would think that he would spike a shield there yeah. to try and get through the remainder of Tailwind so that the Ogre Pond could go on the offense. Unfortunately, though, Wolf with the Pokemon advantage and really with all the momentum on his side of the field, able to go straight for that Sludge Bomb into the Ogre Pond, catch the KO, and most likely bring us into a game number three here in top eight. 
This is such a great match so far, Gabby. Wolf has played this game incredibly well. We saw him a little bit on the back foot all throughout game one, but as soon as this game started, even on that second turn, when he got the tailwind up proactively and then was able to bring in the Tornadus as he KO'd the Urshifu, uh, Wolf has been on the gas this entire time, taking two huge KOs into that Rollaboom and Ogre Pond on consecutive turns with one hit each. This lander has scored two one-hit KOs on consecutive turns here. I think also Wolf recognizing a team advantage that he has with Prankster Tailwind in particular, all of Zachary's speed control is very reactive. Yes. Electroweb will happen later on in the turn. It'll drop the speeds for the next turn. Even if he were to bring the Screamtail, for example, Rock Tomb would still go after a potential Prankster Tailwind because that ability ensures that non-attacking moves will always move first. So if you go for that early Tailwind on the Tornadus, even if you lose it, that works out better for you because then your real attacking Pokemon can come in onto the field and take advantage of all of those turns of boosted speed. Great call out, Gabby. Like you said, the speed control options from Zachary a little bit limited compared to the Prankster Tailwind. One more Earth Power again confirms it will not be able to KO Raging Bolt without a little bit more damage on either end. And Amoonga showing that it is actually faster than Raging Bolt in Tailwind. So a little bit of a good bit yeah. of info there. I think a lot of Amoongas, we typically train them to be as slow as they possibly can, even if you don't run Trick Room, just to have a bit of a better Trick Room matchup. But now Zachary knowing that if Tailwind is up, my Raging Bolt actually is not safe against this Amoongus either. Yeah, so Zachary really needs to focus in here and figure out how he can shut down Tailwind in the next turn, given that that was the key difference from game number one to game number two for Wolf. He does have access to Fake Out, and you could think, you know, maybe I Fake Out an attack or something, but against someone like Wolf, you know that he's going to be thinking about that game plan as well, and I think that's exactly why we've sort of hit the brakes here on this game <laughs> number two. Wolf, I mean, just look at his composure right now. I think he's trying to run through all of these options and just take as much time as he can yeah. to go into game number three. Zachary will lock in the forfeit, though, and here we go. <laughs> Wolf, I mean, Wolf won that game a couple turns ago, and you could see him yes. very deliberately taking more time on his turns. You know, I mean, essentially, to win that game, he just had to hit Earth Power once, and then it ended, and so, you know, you, you got some time to think. You know, you don't have as much time as you might like when you're sitting at Team Preview. I believe it's only 90 seconds to decide which four Pokemon you're going to bring to this matchup. And, of course, a limited time between games as well, but Wolf, with all of his experience, knows hey, I lost game one because I was, you know, on the back foot the whole time. I, I took some different strategies in game two, and obviously it paid off very well. It made some much more offensive reads, especially that Earth Power into the Rillaboom. But now, you know, maybe you think, is that going to work again in game three? Do I need to come up with some other ideas? This lead with the Rillaboom and the Urshifu and the Tornadus and Incineroar, I think can go pretty badly for Wolf. For example, yeah. if Zachary faked out the Tornadus yes. on that first turn instead. Yes. And so you just have to wonder, you know, what can I get away with in this third game now that Zachary is kind of seeing two ways I want to play this lead? Yeah, and especially if you're anticipating seeing that Landorus once again from Wolf as well, you know that the Rillaboom is not going to be the most effective Pokemon for you in the matchup long term. You can set up grassy terrain so that your own Ogre Pond can go for those priority grassy glides. And I think that's a key part of this approach for Zachary, but you really need to make sure you can stop Tailwind. Because at the end of the day, if you're grassy gliding into a Landorus or a Tornadus, you're just not gonna match the damage that they can do to your team in return. And maybe you accept the Flare Blitz into your own Rillaboom as a consequence. But when we go into game number three, we see the first Pokemon adjustment of this set. Wolf actually leading the Amoongus next to the Incineroar. The great lead there for this Amoongus. It is not threatened at all by damage from either of these two Pokemon, especially considering the Intimidate support from that Incineroar right next to it. And now Incineroar obviously still does not like facing Urshifu Rapid Strike at all but it does have an Amoongus next to it, which can Rage Powder any of those attacks away, give it the chance to safely swap or even Parting Shot back out. There is so much on the line here for both Zachary and Wolf. Wolf, eight-time regional champion in the Masters division versus the newcomer to the Masters division. We're just gonna trade fake outs this turn. No more Focus Sash for the Urshifu and the Amoongus unable to move. 
Mungus and Urshifu both unable to move, but notably the Focus Sash broken on the Urshifu. An important bit there for Wolf, because unless it gets another turn of Grassy Terrain Recovery, it will be able to be knocked out by one single hit. That could come in really important against the possible Bleak Wind Storm from Tornadus, even an Earth Power from a Landorus, usually strong enough to win at KO and Urshifu, uh, if it's not holding some kind of bulky item like an Assault Vest like we've seen on some sets, but in this case, obviously not relevant for the match. Urshifu, again, heavily threatens Incineroar, which is really important for Zachary, but the Amoongus there next to it, especially considering the Rillaboom on Zachary's side, is sitting so pretty. These are some pretty free Rage Powders, uh, just to make sure the Incineroar does not get hit by a Close Combat or a Surging Strikes. And it also, you have to wonder how tempting it is for Wolf to try and put that Urshifu to sleep, knowing that there's only so much that it can oh. do in the end game. If it's unable to move, we see a high horsepower connect with the Incineroar, oh. but the Flare Blitz in return from the Incineroar actually bringing the Rillaboom down into the red. Great. Incineroar taking a ton of damage from Recoil. Sludge Bomb will pick up the knockout onto that Rillaboom. Really smart targeting from Wolf there. The fact that Zachary's Urshifu now is back up to full HP, certainly Wolf saw how much it was recovering from the grassy terrain, knew that Zachary probably wanted to get back to the full HP mark where that Focus Sash becomes viable. Double targets that Rillaboom with a Flare Blitz and Sludge Bomb. If it did Terrastalize, obviously it would have been able to survive, but that's a huge dedication of a resource very early on into a match where you probably don't want to give that up right away. And Cinderor did trade a lot of its health for that big KO, but I do think that's a really nice turn of events because now if if grassy terrain expires, Rillaboom cannot come back on the field, reset it up, and re-enable the priority from Ogre Pond's gl grassy glide. It does open up a potential win con for Wolf here that he could stall out grassy terrain, and especially if he has something like Tornadus in the back, you then have your own speed control ready to go. For now, though, we are going to take our first terrestrialization of this final game from Wolf. Terrastalizing the Amoongus into a water-type Pokemon will no longer be taking super effective damage from those fire-type Ivy Cudgels, oh. but Ogrepon does not go on the offense this turn. Opts to Sword Stance to boost its attack for two stages. Surging Strikes to pick up the KO onto the Incineroar, and with just the Amoongus left on the field to attack, Wolf opts to go for a Spore into that Urshifu. Urshifu now put to sleep, but because the Amoongus did not go for Rage Powder, Incineroar does get knocked out. Ogrepan now is a full HP with plus two attack. A massive, massive boost in attack for Zachary. Unfortunately for him, though, the Tornadus does come in, and as we've seen earlier, it is holding that Focus Sash item. Amoongus becoming a water type means it now is weak to the Grassy Glide from the Ogre Palm, and if you're choosing one of Ivy Cudgel or Grassy Glide to be weak to, it's Grassy Glide every day of the week. Oh, for sure. Especially because Grassy Terrain, I believe, only has one or two more turns left. It does, and we're in a really unique spot for Zachary, where I think he wants to get this Urshifu off the field, but at the same time, the long the longer it stays on the field at this point, the more likely it is to wake up in time to threaten a potential Landorus incarnate in the back from Wolf. It's a very tough call here because we know what his last Pokemon is. We know that Raging Bolt would love to stare down the water and flying type Pokemon. But for now, no switches for Zachary going for that fire type terrestrialization on his Ogre Pond activating the Embody Aspect, getting to plus three attack, and all of that power into a Grassy Glide is going to not connect with the Amoongus. Ops to protect and does block all damage from that Grassy Glide. A great turn from Wolf there, knowing that Amoongus was a big threat for Zachary. Bleak Wind Storm comes through. Looks like it will miss one target. Does not hit the Ogre Pond. Brings Urshifu down to its Focus Sash, though. Down to one HP. And thankfully for Zachary, he did have the option to get that Urshifu back up to full HP, which reactivates that Focus Sash. But I think the more important target there is that Ogre Pond, yes. which now is still at full HP. Will require at least three more, or at least two more uh, Bleak Wind Storms to be knocked out. Uh, and of course, now still threatens the Samungus with, I think, one final turn of Grassy Terrain. The grassy terrain is so important here. Wolf has already used Protect on his Amoongus, which means it's not guaranteed to succeed a second time. 
You could try and swap in that last Pokemon into that Amoongus spot, but if you're a Landorus Therian, you're gonna be taking neutral damage from that attack. No switches, Grassy Glide, plus three attack, takes out that Amoongus in a single hit. That plus three attack from the Swords Dance and Heart's Flame and Body Aspect coming in huge. Able to dispatch the Amoongus before Tornadus goes for a Bleak Wind Storm, which is able to connect with both Pokemon. Urshifu goes down. Ogre Pond goes to just over half of its HP remaining, and the Pokemon count is now even at two. We have yet to see the final Pokemon from both of these trainers, but Grassy Terrain notably does end. If Landorus is the final Pokemon for Wolf, this is a great, great spot for it, Gabby. The Tailwind, the possible speed drops from Bleak Wind Storms will ensure that Landers can attack first. The Raging Bolt cannot terrestrialize. It will stay weak to Earth Power. But of course, the Raging Bolt does still threaten decent damage into Landers with Dragon Pulse. Of course, Tornadus is one of the worst things you can use against a Raging Bolt if you're trying to defeat it. It's going to be really interesting to see how these players opt to target here because a one wrong Earth Power, I think, could end this game either way. Yeah, it's worth noting that the Raging Bolt has Assault Vest, which means it cannot protect. So if Wolf is anticipating a protect, you have your Pokemon go for Bleak Wind Storm plus Earth Power into the Raging Bolt and hope that's enough for the KO. But if Ogre Pond attacks instead of goes for that Spiky Shield and is able to connect an Ivy Cudgel with the Landorus, that could be game over for Wolf. We're going to take a moment, set up Talon. Oh. Earth Power will target down that Ogre Pond for the knockout. Now Wolf is just one Pokemon KO away from moving on to yet another top four placement at the regional championships. Dragon Pulse from Raging Bolt though will find the connection with the Landorus, but it's not enough to pick up that knockout. I think that's probably the safest thing Wolf could have done. Zachary probably needed a double spiky shield there to protect that Ogre Pond. And of course, because the Raging Bolt on his side is not running Draco Meteor, but instead Dragon Pulse, you're not threatening a KO into the Landorus in one hit. Let's say, for example, is Zachary a Draco Meteor? That's a much more difficult decision for Wolf because when Landorus goes down, if Raging Bolt stays on the field, Zachary just kind of straight up wins. Tornadus really can't touch Raging Bolt at all. But knowing that at worst case scenario, Landorus has the option to survive one Dragon Pulse, it will be able to pick up the KO with her Earth Power, hopefully. Although Bleak Wind Storm missing there might actually make this a little bit more difficult. Oh, here we go. Bleak Wind Storm missing means that Dragon Pulse connects with the Landorus for the KO. Tornadus still has that Focus Sash in play, is still at full health. What we need to see here is another okay, Bleak Wind Storm one. miss, oh, but enough. it connects with the Raging Bolt for the KO. Wolf Flick winning against Zachary Weed in top eight here to move on to top four of the Orlando Regional Championships. I thought that might actually take two Bleak Wind Storms to KO that Raging Bolt. And if that was the case, it actually could have been a, right, a bit of a mind game at the end there because you, had, you got Thunderclaps, so you got to worry about kind of the power points in that move with the potential to stall it out. But thankfully for Wolf, the final Bleak Wind Storm does connect. And it